Hi everyone and welcome to I Speak Spoke Spoken.com. I'm Dan and today we're looking at dates in British English. So remember you can always get all these slides on the I that's above or on those links that are below if you're on a mobile device or tablet. So let's have a look at dates. Foundation of dates. So dates are structured in this way in British English. We have day, month and year. Okay, it's slightly different in American, but that will be talked about another time. So let's have a look at some examples of that. So today is the 2nd of May. So May with this A sound, okay? 2nd of May 2024. Now, remember that this is a way we, we structure it. There's a 2nd of May. We do use this of in British English. We don't say May 2nd like they do in American English. We say the 2nd of May. All right, let's have a look at the next one. It happened on the 26th of April. Okay, so it happened on the... The preposition is on, on the 26th, always on a date. Okay, on Friday, on Monday, on a date. 26th of April, 2023. And it's structured like this. Okay, we don't put the of when we write, but we definitely say it when we say. Okay, this is very important. Okay, and when it's written actually with words, we would probably write of, but when it's written as a date, the of is not there, but it is spoken. So the next one, the event will begin on August the 12th. We say August the 12th in British English. We don't say August 12th like they might do in American English. We say August the 12th, but we, we write it like this. We don't write it any other way, okay? When it's written like that and like that, these two things you can see, they are written pretty much the same. But we can say them in two ways. We can say on the 26th of April and we can also say on August the 12th. So we can say it two ways, all right? But it's written one way, okay? Good to remember. So detailing the day. So here we have the use of ordinal numbers. So ordinal numbers such as first, second, third and so on okay so when we're talking about detailing the day we will say for example the 2nd of March or the 11th of October okay um, it's quite difficult pronunciation wise to do this sometimes you might have heard me make a little slip up here because it's quite difficult to get this at the end of the uh, of the ordinal number so if you're saying seventh it's actually quite a mouthful so just practice seventh okay it's quite difficult um, or the 11th, the 11th. It's quite difficult to get your, your, hand, your mouth around. The worst one, and the one I made a little mistake on before, is 6th. So 6th is very difficult, actually, even for a native speaker. And we say it quite quickly. When we say it quickly, we say 6th. It's very difficult to do it slowly, actually, and correctly, you know, even. Okay, so it's very common to hear that preceding the day, so the 22nd. Um, so like, what day is it, date is it today? It's the 22nd, okay? Um, very common and absolutely fine. We don't, we don't worry about uh, how, how to say it, we just say it like that. Okay, so these are the months and let's just look deeply at the pronunciation. Because although it's actually, for us, it's very simple and very easy to say and we, we always assume that people around Europe who have similar words sometimes can pick up the English pronunciation, but actually what happens is local languages do kind of interfere. So let's have a look at each individual one. Number one, January, January, okay? And here we have ja, so it's strength at the, at the beginning, January, January. This is long, this is where the, the stress is, January. Quite difficult, but actually not so bad. You can get through this quite easily if you just practice and practice. So the first one, January. There you go, three, four times. Okay, February, February. Now with February, what we do is we say it quite fast. So we say February, and you don't hear this February, but actually it's February. And again, strength here, long vowel, vowel, vowel here, and actually, with February, it's something that many people, even natives, get wrong. You hear February, you hear February, you hear all sorts. But actually, when you say it fast, it, it does kind of blur into some one, one sound. But the correct way 
February. Okay, February. Okay, next one, nice and easy, but actually that end part's quite difficult. March, March. Again, long verb, and then this ch sound at the end. So it's this, this sound at the end, ch. Okay, March, not the same as most European languages. Most European language has some kind of similarity, but this ch sound at the end is specific to English. Number four, April, April. This sound A, this is where the stress is, and here we have our famous schwa, April, April. Um, nice. Okay, number five, May. Kind of, kind of nice and easy. You just have this A sound, which is this diphthong, vowel, and the, the letter M, May. Okay, May. This one, June, June. The J sound and OO, this long OO sound, June. Very similar to June is July, July. Again, the first sound is this J and then the OO, but actually the pronunciation wise, so the stress here, the, the end of the word is where you put the stress, so July, July. So this is where we have the stress, this part here. Okay, the next word on the list, or the next month we have on the list is August, and it has this long or sound at the beginning, which is stressed, and it's long, August, and then we have our famous schwa here, August, August. Okay, number nine, September, September. Strength here on the 10, September. Be very careful not to uh, allow your own language interfere with the end. It's actually September. Now, there are two ways where we can do this. We can have a, uh, we can have the schwa, and we can have this sliding scale to this er. Uh. So you can say September, you can say September. It depends whereabouts in the UK you come from, whether you're speaking British or American English. But the reason I'm not telling you is definitely a. Uh, is because I know in the UK alone, people move from here to here. So anywhere from here to here on the end of these words is absolutely fine. Okay, so September. October, October. Again, the stress is here on the second syllable. October, September. October, O sound. And again, same issue, okay? November, November. Same stress in the same place, this O and this er sound, November, okay? December, December, December. Actually, there are two ways that we can say this. December is what most people say. So this is the I, comes out as an I sound, strength there. Same rules as the rest of the words here. But some people might say December or December. It's actually depending on where you are in the country. But the standard I would say is December, I, December. All right, excellent, let's move on. So let's have a look at the dates in British English and how to articulate the year. So how to, how to say the years or write them. Um, many of my students at school, uh, when they're reading text, when they come to a date, they're always feeling very, oh, I can't read that, that's very difficult. So they don't want to read it, but actually it's really easy. Once you've got the, the trick, you can read any number or date. So let's just focus on dates today. So for example, you can split the two numbers into two. So 2020 is very easy. So 2020 zero, zero is not the way we say it. We say 2020. So 2020 or 2010, 2019, um, 2008, you can say that too. So you can split it to two numbers. And that happens actually, it happened a lot in the last century, like 1987. Uh, 1976, 1991, okay? You have the 19, then the 91. So this was quite a typical way of saying dates in those latter years of the last century. And it probably will be going forward. Um, there's another way, though. When the numbers are smaller and around the turn of the century, we started saying things like 2001, because the year 2000 was the big change, the big year that everything changed. So we started saying instead of like 1999, we would say 2000, year 2000, 2001, 2002. Okay, so this is something that we're using at the moment. 
But right now, I think we're probably back on here, we're saying 2024. We don't really say 2024. I haven't heard it too much recently, but it does happen and it is okay. So constructing and articulating dates then in British format, we have a different way of doing it to the Americans. Um, we do it day, month and year. The Americans do it month, day and year at times. And for a British person, that's kind of can be quite confusing. Depends if you haven't got your computer set to British English, you miss a lot of appointments, believe me. So a British format is, for example, 28th of May 2023 or the 28th of May. Um, we can either you can do it like this or you can write it like this. This is usually more written. Um, this is usually more spoken. So written, spoken. OK, so you have some um, incorporated sentences here. We are, let's have a look. The conference starts on the 3rd of March. The conference starts on the 3rd of March. Very British way of doing it. He is due to retire on the 20th of July 2030. Notice how I used the two split numbers here because it just seems a little bit easier. So whatever feels easier for you, especially now when the numbers are getting slightly higher. So he is due to retire on the 20th of July 2030. Have a go, have a practice it. You can take these slides like we said before, you can, you've got your eye at the top, click on that, practice, look at them at your own leisure with your own time. You can pause the video now if you want and have a look and just practice saying these things. So great, let's go on. Let's have a look at the next part. So common phrases uh, with dates. So let's have a look at how we use dates within common phrases. So what date is the wedding? So you might ask a question about when something happens. What date, remember date is like this, uh, is the wedding? What date is the wedding? You can say that. What is the date, for example? Let's move the event to the second of next month. So we can just say the date itself. So let's move the event to the second. We have this ordinal number and we can do it that way. We don't have to say to um, the second of the name of the month, but we can say it like this. It's fine. Let's move the event to the second of the month. Their graduation, this is a very difficult word to get your, your mouth around. So graduation with the stress here, okay? Their graduation is on the 12th of June. Their graduation is on the 12th of June. So there are three ways that we can use these phrases, these date phrases in everyday speech. Okay, special dates and festivities and how we can recognise them. Um, knowing special dates and, and holiday terms is beneficial really. It's good to know so you can talk about them, you can enter into cultural conversations. So Valentine's Day on the 14th of February. Um, maybe actually what I'll do is I'll tell you the date and you can have a go at saying the date and then we'll see if you've, you've got this, this practice worth doing like we did before. So Valentine's Day, 14th of February. If you repeat, 14th of February. Let's try the next one then. So Easter, Easter. Stress here, E, this long, and it varies each time actually. It varies throughout the year. Okay, the next one, Halloween, Halloween. The stress and this word here, but actually because it's kind of a long word, um, you do find that there's a little secondary stress here. So Halloween, uh, and you can see it, without that, it would just be all lost. It would be all lost in the first syllable or the first couple of syllables. So have a go at saying the date. How do you think we say this? Yeah, it's the 31st of October, the 31st of October. Now remember, the of doesn't have to be written, but we definitely say it, okay? All right, what about Christmas? Christmas. Now notice, although we have this t here, when we say it in regular speech, we don't say Christmas. We say Christmas, and you'll see it here. So the stress here, no t and mus. How, how about that date? Have a go. Yes, the 25th of December. Now you can say the 25th of December. Absolutely fine. Well done. So last one, New Year's. New Year's. So New Year's, actually New Year's Eve we often say, but New Year's we say too. 
Um, we don't always say Eve, we just kind of use the whole term. So New Year's Eve though, specifically, what date is that? Have a go at trying to say that one. Yes, the 31st of December. The 31st of December. Well done. Okay, so you did very well, I'm sure, with these last dates when you were trying to pronounce, pronounce them correctly. Um, let's now have a go at writing the dates that we see. So, um, you need a bit of paper and a pen, or you can download this and you can print it out if you want to, or you can do it on your laptop, but make sure you, you've got something to write on. Um, remember, you can get these slides previous. You can stop the video and get the slides now if you want. Um, but let's have a look at how we can do this. So I'm going to read the, the prompt and then you're going to write the date. Okay, now make sure you follow exactly what I say because, um, for example, on the first one, you're going to write the date as it should be written. But I might, when I give you the answer, I'll say it as it should be spoken. Okay. Remember, in the previous slides, we talked about this. You can either go back in the video now or you can get those slides offline so you can see what I'm talking about. So let's have a go at number one then. So you receive a letter dated on the first day of the year. Write the date you see on the letter. Okay, so I'm going to give you a few seconds to just write that down. Write the date you see on the letter. Letter dated on the first day of the year. Okay, so spoken, that date is the 1st of January. Okay, the 1st of January. But written, we would write it like this. Okay, 1st of January. All right. So, this is very interesting because it's different written, isn't it, as we, uh, how we say it. So, this is what we have to be aware of. So, this written would be spoken the 1st of January. Okay, let's have a look at the next one. Now, the next one, the task is slightly different. On this task, you have to write the date in words. Okay, so it's not the same way. It's how you write it as you would speak it. So, number two, your friend's birthday is on the day after the 22nd of April. Write out the full date of your friend's birthday. Okay, have a go. I'll give you a little bit more time this time. Okay, let's have a go. So, the answer is the 23rd of April. But how do we write it? Well, we write it like this. So, the 23rd of April. Okay, the 23rd of April. Excellent. I think you've got the hang of it. Let's have a look at number three then. So, a history book References an important event that took place on the 15th day of the 8th month in 1945. Write this date as you would find it in the book. Okay, how would you find it in the book? So not as I would say it, as it would be written in the book. Have a go. Give you a little bit more time this. Okay. So let's have a look at the answer. So the eighth month is August, right? So the date would be like so. The 15th of August, 1945. That's how you write it. You can put a comma there. You don't have to either. It doesn't matter whether you put a comma there or not. Sometimes you'll find one, sometimes you won't. Okay, excellent, well done. Let's have a look at some more of these. This is really good practice, actually. Um, it's great practice to, to just have a look at how you can form a date because it takes everything we've done in the last few slides and it makes it kind of solid, solidified and clarified. So, number four. You're planning a meeting scheduled for the last day of February in a leap year. Write the date of the meeting. So it's a leap year, remember, like we've had this year. You're planning a meeting scheduled for the last day of February in a leap year, write the date of the meeting. Okay, I'm going to give you a few seconds. All right, excellent. So, we say it as the 29th of February. We write it like this. The 
29th of February. We don't write the of, we don't write the the, we just write it like this, 29th of February. Okay, excellent. So let's have a look at the next one, number five. An email mentions an upcoming festival that starts on the 31st of October. Write down the date of the festival's first day. So an email mentions an upcoming festival that starts on the 31st of October. Write down the date of the festival's first day. All right, have a go. All right, this is how it goes. So 31st of October. Thirty first of October. All right. Again, this is just how you write dates. You don't have to worry about um, the ofs, the the when you write it in writing form. You can, you can, but you don't have to. Okay, number six. <laughs> this one is quite a challenging one. Your flight is booked for the third Thursday of June in the year two thousand and twenty-four. It's actually the year we're making this video. Assuming the first day of June is a Saturday. Write the date of your flight. So you have to have a bit of a mathematical brain to get this one as well, or at least have a calendar in front of you. So your flight is booked for the third Thursday of June in the year 2024. Assuming the first day of June is a Saturday, write the date of your flight. I'm gonna give you a little hint. So in case you're not mathematically gifted as I, then we will have this to, to do. Have a look at this. So there you go. There's your little hint. Okay, so we would write Saturday, the 13th of June, 2024. And that is the day and date of your flight. Okay, so apologies to anyone who's uh, had a, a crazy mathematical brainstorm at the moment but that's kind of how we how we're trying to do things um, number seven let's have a look at number seven you're reading a novel set during world war ii which mentions the d-day landings in normandy france the event occurred on the sixth day of june in 1944 write this historical date okay so the sixth day of june in 1944 how would you write this Yes, okay, let's have a go. So it's 6th of June, 1944. That's it, okay. So how would you say it? The 6th of June, 1944. The 6th of June, 1944. Same with this, Saturday, the 13th of June, 2024. Okay, just practice these, you know. You can see um, how simple they are to write and, and only a little bit different to speak you know, to say. So just that, you know, the of added to these, the 31st of October, um, Saturday, the 13th of June, 2024. It's nice and easy. Just practice. Practice makes perfect. Okay. Right then, we've got one more, one more in, in store for you. Let's have a look at this. Okay, the last one. And we've got a bit more maths for you. I'm oh, sorry about that. But anyway, it's great practice to go through the dates anyway. Yeah. Um, a space mission is scheduled to launch on the first Monday of July, 2025. If July the 1st falls on a Wednesday, determine the launch date. So write down the launch date. So we've got the first on the Wednesday. We've got the second on the Thursday. We've got the third on the Friday. Okay, Friday, here we are. Um, you understand my scribbles. We've got the 4th, Saturday, 5th, Sunday, so 6th will be the Monday, okay? So this is just write sat and sun here. Actually, when you're writing words quickly, yeah, when writing days of the week quickly, we often just take the first three letters. So wed, sat, sun, it's perfectly okay if you're doing things quickly. So your date that you're going to be looking at is the 6th of... July, which is the 7th, 2025. So how would you write it? How would you write that date down? Not in my way, but in a, in a, a way that we've been talking about before. Have a think. 
So yes, let's finish this off. So 6th of July, 2025. Perfect. I've challenged you, haven't I? You're feeling a little bit, I know. It's okay, it's, it's fine. Practice, say them, write them. You'll get it all right and you'll be able to use your dates with confidence next time they come up. So remember, review these, go to that I above, download, do the test. If you're on a mobile and tablet, links below. Get this really sorted in your heads. Go through it and through it and through it and you'll be fine. So please enjoy this and I'll see you at our next video. My name's Dan and this is ispeakspokespoken.com.